Howdy, how are you today? So I have another project using Gorgeously Made and you know this stamp set just lends itself to being a collage type oh, a collage type stamp and I do love Granny Apple this is Parakeet Party so see it's a little bit different but this one I'm completely following my heart I love the colors on it and I use these colors really often Pebble Path is my new go-to color. <clears throat> it used to be crumb cake, but I'm really liking, and I keep using over and over. It's like it's the answer for everything. Pebble Path. And, yeah, a little bit repetitive, but isn't that cool? So it folds like that. Isn't that fun? So this card, I saw a card, and it was a standard size card from reallyrobinstamps.com. And if you haven't checked out Really Robin, you, you really should. Um, reallyrobinstamps.com. And she had a series of creating a focal point. She had three different parts, and it's very interesting and she's a very good teacher. And I met her just a few months ago, and she's delightful. So I encourage you to stop by, give her a nice comment and a thumbs up, and enjoy her three parts. She does a lot of homework in advance of doing her videos. And gosh, I appreciate that. She's, she's a good girl. But this idea comes from really Robin Stamps. The, the colors or a bit of the colors. She had different colors going on. Mine got a little bit crazy. Um, but I changed it up with this fun fold. But check out her stuff. So this is today's project. And I love this project. I'm following my heart with this project. Gorgeously made and gorgeously made dies. Ink colors are pebbled path. And... Look how friendly these all are together. Pool Party, Lost Lagoon, and Pretty Peacock. Okay, you ready? Let's, let's make this. Gosh, I love that. Okay, so we already talked about really Robin stamps. And I'm going to use this for scoring. And I'll put the score, score lines and the paper cut sizes on my blog. And my blog is jillybling.com. But we will be scoring the base paper that's cut to four and a quarter by 11. We'll score it at two and three quarters, four and a quarter, seven and a quarter, eight and a half. And that will all make sense here in just a minute. In color dots. I think these might be on back order, but as soon as they come off a of back order, these are just, these are so pretty. And I've, I've liked many of their other dots. Usually they're in brighter colors. But these are the in colors, and they come in a like five across because there's five in colors. Let me let me put them here inside the package. It's five across, but to fit into my little passport protectors, I make them smaller. Twenty three, twenty five in color dots. Love these. Okay, so we'll use those at the end. And quarter foil tile embossing folder. We'll use that, and that is for a little bit of texture right on here. Not yet, though. Oh, I have this well laid out. Let me see if I could just pick this up, kind of just shift everything, and then we'll score the base paper. Okay, so. To score, I'm going to need the whole length. Score it at two and three quarters. Four and a quarter. And don't worry about writing any of this stuff down because I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha you covered. Seven and a quarter. And eight and a half. I think the last one, so this is a series of three, and this is this is like an Avid Stampers Club. So if you buy the bundle through me, you get three card kits um, through the mail, or if you're local, we'll meet in person, um, and you get to make them for free. And in the kit will include 
because you have this die, I'll just include the paper for it. I'll include the embellishments and the ribbon and all these cut papers and the base paper already scored. Um, and they'll come in the mail. The due date, the cutoff for this is, if you order by, have it stampers, order by August 5th. On August 6th, I'll cut the kits and I'll get them out in the mail just a few days later. And I'd love to send one to you. So if you're inspired by these projects, let me show you the other one. Um, go ahead and place an online order. Oh, and if you can, use a host code. That's great. Um, but here is the first one. It's kind of a masculine card. And the last one, isn't that pretty? The card number three is a little bit more floral with um, blues in it and freesia. So, there it is for all of you avid stampers. So in the Stampin' Up, I'm going to confirm these score lines, in the Stampin' Up catalog and their publications, many times they talk about, um, how do they say it? They say it in a beautiful way, like a classic clean and classic type card, which is usually just a little bit more simple. For example, putting a piece of designer paper on and a ribbon and a label with words on it. And then a few embellishments, which is great for a card, especially if you're doing a whole bunch of them. That's a classic. And then they say, step it up. And that means like maybe put a layer underneath the designer paper and um, like maybe just another thing on it on the card for decorations. But Avid Stampers are cards like this that there's quite a bit on there, but it looks good. It's kind of artsy, but it might be for some people too much. But if you have it all given to you, it's, it's hard to not do it. Or this would be um, probably more the Avid line just because it has a lot going on. Anyhow, these are avid, avid stampers. We, we ain't messing around stampers. Okay, so that is done. That looks kind of cool, stair steps. So what are these pieces over here? Let's take this as the first panel. Second panel. And the last panel. This is for words. Let's just do the words. We're thinking about words. Words, I like this. You're, um, you're a great friend. But let's try to shake it up a little. How about, hello. Is that going to get lost on that label? That might be a good thing because this is a bit busy. Let's just do the hello. Hello is in Pebbled Path. Pebbled Path. Uh, I'm going to have to throw out the whole paper. Um, but that's okay. It's good. You know what? I think that's just a little bit too... Hold on. That's too lost. That got lost. Let's go back to good friend. You're a great friend. Not a good friend. A great friend. You just like put this in someone's purse. Then when they get home, they're like, what is this? I always write on a sticky and um, give it to them so that they could continue to share it. Yeah, that fits better. So I could give it to someone else. Okay, let me cut that out. Cut it out! Okay. And I think I stamped it crooked. It's going to drive me crazy. Hold on. Let me cut another one. I like to be all prepared, but I didn't see that being crooked. looks a little crooked too. I'm just crooked today. 
Well, the best one. This one. This one is great. This one can be recycled. Okay, where were we? Let's cut. See on the white paper how it has a spiral binding? Let's cut that on these two papers. Okay. Right there. You know, we can stick down. Let's let's do that. Um So this paper, it kind of looks like waves. Do you want to go in up and down or side to side? I'll try it side to side. On the sample, I did it the other direction, which turned out fine, but you know, I like to change things around a little bit. Okay, and I'll put that here. Okay, so to put it here, just not adhesive right here, but adhesive here. To make sure I get it to the edge, right here too. Okay, now when I put this on, I just want a nice perimeter. Yeah, that's pretty equal. Okay, panel number one on. Then these pieces will go on there. Let's do the next one. So the kids are on their honeymoon kids have chickens. The kids got an automatic door up, automatic door down for the chicken um, coop, pen area. Um, but they still need, like every few days, someone to like visit, give them some of their special little worms. Anyhow, Tony just came home from work and now he's headed off to feed the chickens or check on the chickens. Okay, so on this panel, it's gonna go on this panel right here, and again, I'm gonna make sure that there's a, a nice equal perimeter. And this amount equals that amount. Now the thing is, how is it when it closes? Ooh, those are good. See how these are perfectly lined up? Nice. If you look at the sample, not that I'm admitting to it, not so good, but that's okay. The card is like, wow. Okay, let's do the last panel. These are for the middle, that's for the front. I glue on me. Oh, so this piece, the white piece, I could put it on there just as a rectangle on a rectangle, but you know, if there's a die, we have to try to be fancy. So I'm gonna use the die. To cut this out, and just try to get close to the edge. If you can, if not, that's okay. Okay. So I'm not going to attach that quite yet until I stamp it a little bit. But I can put this paper on. Okay, so when you have a solid color paper, and you know I'm going to put it right in here. Do you catch yourself flipping it upside down to put adhesive on it? It's solid color. It's the same on both sides. You know, these silly little games we play. I usually catch myself afterwards. It's like, I didn't have to flip that over. But I do anyhow. Like even the white. Okay, I'm going to stick it down. Put it... You don't have to, but that's going to go right there after we stamp on it a bit. Okay, how about cutting some greenery, parakeet party greenery. 
So there's these two dies that come with the bundle. Where's the sample? So there's this one. Look at, can you see how delicate and pretty that is? I mean, these little pieces, I'm, I'm like, should I take time and pop them each up? But I think that as soon as I put the card together, they would plop right back down. But I mean, there's opportunity to do stuff. So there's this one, and then there is this one. This one over the top, when Robin did hers, she had it tucked underneath. It made the card a little bit less busy, but then it covered up all this green, which I like. But it is a little busy, so maybe this time I'll try taking the die-cut parakeet party piece and put it underneath the tag. Okay, so let's cut these out. On to parakeet party paper. Parakeet party. Okay. Look how pretty. Aren't those nice? So on the sample, I have the kind of crazy one. There, so I'm going to try to do it opposite. We'll see how it, we'll see how that goes. I keep on hearing Bruiser. He's outside. Bo is inside. Okay, and so now this piece. Well, let's do some fun with this piece. This piece of pebbled path paper is when I get embossing folder and. Where's that ziggle zaggle? And ziggle zaggled. Just at the bottom, not at the top. And I'm doing this only because Robin did it. And because she did it, I think it's a great idea. Okay. If you're like, what are you talking about? <clears throat> See this how it looks torn? That's this die. So I'm going to first cut out the pebbled path paper, and then I'm going to texture it. So there's that shape from the die, and then it was textured with this embossing folder. Okay, can you see how pretty that is? But to make it prettier and vintagier. Let's put some ink on it. And to put ink on it, pebble bath. Well, hold on. I hear Bruce. Just a minute. Come here. Come here, little nugget. Come on. That dog, he likes laying in the sun. He is a sunbather. Okay, so you can, I'm purposely putting my middle finger under the middle so that I can have some pressure. You could do it like that, or you can just rub across the top. And I know not that much of this is going to be seen, so I don't have to do the middle of it. And I'm purposely trying to get some, like right there it's a little bit light, here it's a little heavy, on purpose. Because it's made by hand. No machine is distressing ours. We're doing it. Okay, so that is good. Okay, let's see where we are. I think it might be time for stamping. I could put this on. I'll put that on. But you know, I'm going to use glue. Glue, just because there's so much texture on here. Bruiser is over there, and I'm, I'm not all that used to Bruiser, but he's over there. <coughs> like, he's, a, he's a, um, a Boston Terrier. Cutest little face and human eyes ever. But um, he's just making all kinds of noise. I think he's, like, in my chair, in my fluffy blanket, getting all cozy, I think. I don't hear Bo going, oh, what are you doing? Um, isn't that funny? They started out the same size. 
but this is eclectic and collage. Okay, so that's good. This is going to go here. So let's do some, I guess we could stick the, the leaves on. I'm not sure yet about the leaves. So let's do some stamping. Oh, I was supposed to stamp on here. Okay, this one is not stamped. So see on here, that is this big stamp. Well, let's try it. At least, it's vintage. Can I do, I could do, I could do this. It's vintage. I just have very distressed paper. <laughs> there we go. I guess if there's a will. Okay. So to do that, <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit bad about that, but that's okay. Maybe I should do that. I'm going to do this in a darker color. On the white, I'll do it in pool party. That's the plan. Oh, it's stamped over the edge. Well, sometimes see this this is a lesson in improvising. Do you all improvise like this? Okay, there we are. Vintagey. Yeah. And I have ink all over everything. Okay, well, I have some finely distressed papers. Let's try it again. Lots of glue this time. Or is it the other way around? Okay, we're getting it. This is the distressed card that's causing me stress, but I still love it. And now, now you can hardly see what was stamped, but that's okay. We know. We know it's stamped under there. Okay. And what's next? Stamping on the white papers. These two right here start out very plain and simple. They're going to get very fancy. Okay, so this one has this stamped right here and then second generation. That's in Pretty Peacock. Peacock, second generation, okay, third generation, and any anything else? Nope. That one just has the script and that long background stamp. Okay, Pretty Peacock, I think that's done. Okay, and next is in Pool Party, this one, but I know I put that in Lost Lagoon. So, let's clean it up a little. Put 
pool party and they all, all of them get this. Pool party. But I'm going to do just one at a time because, because I can't handle no more. Probably mess up on it. Okay. And then second, third, fourth. Good. Same here. Yeah. Thinking I like vintage. Okay. Now, let's start with the first one. First one of that pool party. And now this little script in Pebble Path. This one. And you know, I was trying to figure this out. It's like, what does it say? I don't know. I can't tell. So that goes down in the corner. And then everywhere. Hopefully straight. There. Vintaged. Okay, now the same. This one, but I'm keeping it just a little. See how that's full strength? This one's a little lighter. This one is heavier on the inside. I'll try to do that again. Ink the whole thing. Stamp off. Then, vintage it. Here and here and here. And everywhere. Oh, that one looks good. And finally, ooh, the last one has lots on. Okay. Ink the whole thing. Stamp off. Here. Oop, I did one a little crooked. Oh, I'm getting crazy on this one. You think it's too much? So I do it again? Add more? I think it'll be fine once it's on there. Because if you had an ink pen, you could definitely write over the top of that. Okay, and on the middle one, this one is done. Yeah, that'll be fine. On the middle one gets... Lost Lagoon, that leaf, this leaf right here. So, Lost Lagoon, a leaf, and second generation, and third generation. Okay. I think we're done stamping. Now it's just assemble, assembly. This one is easy. Bo is having a nightmare. I've never heard Bruiser have a nightmare. I think it's just Bo. Okay, so this one goes on to here. And you know, I was putting it like this, and when you close up the card, it's just too busy. But then putting it here, um, when you open the card, you see the continuation of all the distress and eclecticness. But right here, nothing, nothing, and then you see it. I think that's better. Because the card, the card gets a little busy. Okay, so now, how about, this one is a middle one. Because I don't want to put white, white, so I think this one belongs in here. Therefore, this one belongs <coughs> right here. Okay, and now I'm going to try to change up this. I think that'll do. Okay, and remember how I was saying that because the parakeet party die cut um, leaves were just a little bit too busy, I'm going to try to tuck this underneath. Or maybe this one on top, this one underneath. Yeah, I think it's just this one that's busy. 
This one is calm. Okay, so this goes on with dimensionals. Right about here. Then this one goes on top. Let me see how this is going to look first. On top, crooked words. Oh, and then the ribbon. The ribbon is going to help it a bit. So if I put it on top, do I have to dimensional the rest of it? Mm, it's too tiny. Those dogs sleep all day and all night. I don't know how they do that. Because I hear Bo snoring over there, breathing deep. Not Bruiser. Bruiser's quiet. Okay, I'll let the glue start to get tacky and then I'll put it down. So before I put the words on, I'm going to use some ribbon, Moss Lagoon bordered ribbon right here. And I tried the pebbled path, which works, but I think it gets lost in there. But it might be good to calm it down, but yeah. That's crooked. That was a little better. If I keep looking, I'll, I'll decide opposite. Maybe the hello would, would have been good. So this is going to go here. Now straighten that out in just a minute. But the words are going to hang off the edge, so I'll put a dimensional here. And let me try to straighten out this ribbon. See how it's kind of dipping down low right there. Okay, now worry about that because I can see it's kind of curving up. This is good. Okay, and then... I'm trying to come up with a place. I like to see the corner of the little tag, but it's really busy, and I think that the white words kind of calm it down a bit. That looks good. Okay, let's work on the next panel. Then we'll come back and we'll put the, um, the ink color dots on there. So this, yeah, it's going to go underneath. Messy glue, it's operator error. 
Okay, I'm just gonna plop this on here. How about right there? That's where it wants to go. Yeah! Stick! <laughs> And, oh, this is a nice edge. You all use your edges, right? They're so worthy. One time I saw in the garbage can, someone was throwing away all their edge pieces. I'm like, oh my gosh, am I really thinking about being a garbage picker? And I did, I took it out. I did say to everyone at the table, you know, cause I don't know who did it and I didn't want anyone to feel bad. Um, I said, you know, those edges, they're perfectly good for using. Okay, so there, you could write love notes there. Nothing here that has a greeting on it. And then you can write inside here. I think all we have to do is um, fancy it up with bling. You, uh, If you're watching this, you're an avid stamper. If you're watching this, you might be thinking, she's crazy. She puts too much stuff on there. But if you're still watching it, you're an avid stamper. Just saying. Just saying I'm not all alone in this. Okay, big dot. It's nice that there's three sizes. Oh, where should they go? Okay, this is how it'll look when it's closed. How about, because I did put one on here. I did big medium, small. How about, because I'm thinking they should go over here. Okay. Big. You notice how perfectly they match too? Stamping up you do good. Oh, I could put it right on here. Three, odd number. There. Okay, today's project, yeah. Here, just imagine this coming in, this is my pretend envelope. Honey, you have snail mail. Oh, I do, what is it? Pull it out from the envelope. What did Jelly Bling send me? Oh my gosh, she uses all the favorite products and all the favorite bling and colors. She really loves me. <laughs> That's it for today. I hope you have a good day.